Welcome back to Careers Explained. I'm Jesse Doyle, and this week we're talking with Lauren Albold about her career path and current role as a medical assistant at Anne Arundel Dermatology. Welcome, Lauren, and thank you for coming on today. Hi, Jesse. Thank you so much for having me. Can you give us a brief overview about how your undergrad led to where led you to where you are now and any internships or jobs that you've had leading up to becoming this medical assistant role? Yeah, definitely. So going into undergrad, I knew I kind of wanted to be in healthcare and through, you know, the different courses I took, uh, all of my science courses, my biologies, my chemistries, that just kind of really solidified um, my passion for going into the healthcare field. So that kind of motivated me, uh, my one of my COVID years to get my certified nursing assistant license um, over winter break which I actually used to work as a certified nursing assistant on a COVID floor um, the summer of 2020. So that was a huge stepping stone for me because it was one of the first chances that I had to interact with patients and really my first experiences in a hospital um, with hands-on direct patient care. So that really shaped a lot into um, me taking on the current role that I'm in now post-grad. Um, I learned so much from that role and really just wanted to diversify my experience with patients, which kind of led me to finding this job as a medical assistant. So what would you say that that exactly role helped you learn what you wanted in a job versus what you didn't want in a job? So in healthcare, as some people might be pretty familiar, there's really two kind of types of patient um, patient care, there's inpatient and there's outpatient. And so inpatient is what you really have when you're inside a hospital. So when you go to a hospital, you're there for a week or two weeks and then you're discharged. Whereas outpatient is kind of your more private practice type of medicine where you come in for your appointment and you might not come back for another six months or you might have a follow up shorter or longer than that. So it really gave me a chance to try inpatient care and see if I liked that kind of format and setting and patient interaction versus with outpatient care, which I'm in now. Um, and I just really kind of realized that I like building longer lasting relationships with my patients, which you can do with an outpatient setting, uh, because you're really establishing a relationship with follow ups that extend, you know, years, if not months across time, as opposed to caring for someone for two weeks, and then you might never hear from them again. So that was kind of my biggest takeaway from when I was a nursing assistant to my role now as a medical assistant. Are there any other steps that you want to highlight between, I guess, getting to your undergrad at Davidson College and where you are now post-graduation? Yeah, I think another huge part for me was just all the research opportunities I had at Davidson. Um, I, I did independent research with um, Dr. Campbell in genomics and with Dr. Ramirez in the neuroscience lab. And both of those were entirely different experiences that I would have never planned on. Uh, doing in my four years when I came in, um, but both of those professors and both of those experiences really just helped me to realize, you know, what kind of, um, you know, work ethic I have, what kind of person, you know, I want to be in healthcare and kind of what kind of different specialties and niche areas I'm interested in. So that was definitely a huge, huge stepping stone for me too. Um, without those research opportunities through Davidson, I really don't think I would be the same person I am in this role today. Can you talk a little bit about your current role right now? Yeah, so um, as a medical assistant, I'm responsible for not only um, assisting my medical provider, which may be anywhere from a physician to a physician assistant to a nurse practitioner. Um, and so this includes helping them with a lot of minor procedures. So whether that's doing a biopsy of like a mole or a possible skin cancer or a more involved surgical procedure such as excising a cyst or um, you know, a lipoma or something like that. So I assist with those procedures as well as scribing, um, which is maintaining an accurate record of what went on in the visit and um, that other providers can use if the patient ever went to, you know, a different healthcare um, provider, a different dermatologist. So in addition to those kind of day-to-day -day responsibilities, I'm also in charge of a lot of administrative tasks. 
So those include anywhere from scheduling patients to um, handling some insurance and like billing related uh, issues and other just little tasks such as, you know, refill requests or other paperwork. Um, but the main kind of overview is just to assist my healthcare provider in any way and really help them to just focus on uh, providing great care to the patients. So. Was there anything else that had you really interested in this role at the dermatology? Mm -hmm. um, I think I thought, I always thought dermatology was a super cool field to get into. Um, it was always one that I was super interested in. Um, and so I always had kind of hoped that I would end up doing um, dermatology in some kind of way, shape or form. So, um, I think just a general interest in the subject and, you know, having it be something that, you know, everyone can take, you know, their own initiative in charge in, whether it's like skincare or, you know, sunscreen or, you know, whatever little thing it is. Um, I thought that was super interesting and really applicable to all fields of medicine and just all people. So that also just kind of drew me to the role um, specifically in dermatology. You've talked about your typical roles and responsibilities. What does a typical day or even a typical week look like if you could walk us through that? Maybe today I see you're in your scrubs. So yes. <laughs> talk a little bit about what happened today. Yeah. So in a typical day, we usually start um, seeing our first patient at 830. So I arrive around eight o'clock. I help set up, you know, the rooms, make sure they're stocked for the day with all the supplies that my provider might need. Um, first patients at 830, we do 15 minute um, appointment time increments where we might be anywhere from double booked to triple booked in those time periods. It just kind of depends on the day and the schedule. Um, we do a lot of routine cancer screenings. So a lot of skin checks, you know, just taking measurements of everyone's moles, making sure that they are normal and not any cause for concern. Um, we do also have a couple slots that are for more acute cases, such as, you know, rashes or more like emergent needs. And then um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have what are called surgical days. And so these days we might do more advanced surgical procedures because we have a little bit more time than we would on a normal you know, kind of morning or a normal Wednesday or Monday. Um, and so for these appointments, these are my personal favorite because you get to see different surgical procedures, whether that's um, excising like a melanoma or, you know, excising a cyst. And it's it's been a super hard challenge for me to get used to the sterile field and, you know, being caught up to date with all of the surgical procedures and surgical protocols. So that's another um, thing that we do kind of day to day. So that's part of the things I love about this job is every day you have different patients, you have different cases, you have different challenges. So no two days are exactly the same, but um, that's our general kind of layout. Wow, I love hearing that that's your favorite day is going into surgery. And I guess you have that background working in the neuroscience lab back at Davidson, right? With the rats. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> is there anything else that you really like at this job that you would want to see in future jobs? Anything you find challenging that you want to make sure you continue? And I guess as your career path continues on the next couple of years. Um, I think one thing that I love about medicine, and just especially my role in my office, is it's incredibly collaborative. Um, every day you are you're watching healthcare providers work with each other, ask each other questions, you know, consult whether the PA is asking for a consult from you know a physician or the physician is working with the PA to make sure the patient's treatment plan is you know fully covered, fully planned out. There's just so much collaboration. And as um, a member of the volleyball team while I was at Davidson, uh, you, yes, <laughs> go cats. <laughs> um, every day, you know, you're just, you're stressed with the importance of communication, collaboration, teamwork. And that was always something that I really valued both on the team during my time at Davidson and honestly in this role. And so I think one thing that's really important to me for my career path going forward is that I'm in an environment that really fosters that communication and collaboration between different healthcare providers, um, especially as a PA. So that's something I really love about my office. Um, it's also been super cool to learn so much 
We have a cosmetic dermatology side that does a lot of like injectables and other cosmetic procedures. And we also have our general dermatology side, um, which is super cool to kind of see how both worlds operate and both worlds kind of, you know, are intertwined. So that's also been something like I've really enjoyed getting to learn more about. Um, in terms of challenges, probably the biggest challenge for me so far has been more of the administrative tasks and getting used to dealing with people's insurances and billing. And it's a lot of stuff that they don't necessarily, you know, teach you in college, you know, health insurance and how it works. So I've had to um, get up to speed on that whole side of things. But, you know, again, it's something that has been really interesting to learn about and learn about how, you know, our healthcare system as a whole kind of operates and um, works with that, so. Right, right. And that's a really great point that I feel like we wouldn't really get to know unless we're talking directly to someone like you who just was thrown into the medical field. Okay, so you mentioned um, wanting to be a PA in the future. And since I know you personally, I know that that's the end goal. So you want to talk a little bit about that and kind of how medical, being a medical assistant right now is a stepping stone towards your end goal of becoming a PA? Yeah, so uh, really crucial to the PA profession is um, patient care experience. Normally when you apply to PA school, you need at least a minimum of about 1,000 to ideally about 2,000 patient care hours. And they're very specific on what counts for these hours. You, you know, you have to be directly in contact with patients speaking with patients, interacting with patients constantly. So um, I really wanted a role where I could do that and satisfy kind of that requirement of my application. So that kind of is what made me really motivated to choose to be a medical assistant um, kind of on that path to PA school is to get uh, start cracking at those hours before I applied. Um, it's crazy to think that now, almost one year out, I am about to apply to PA school for this cycle. So at the end of this month, I start submitting applications, <laughs> which is super exciting, but also super scary. Um, so hopefully after this cycle, I'll have an idea of where I'm going to go, and then I'll start my training to become a PA. Um, for those that aren't familiar, it's a two-year program. So one year you kind of learn all the medicine side of things and the other year you spend with like clinical rotations. So I'm really looking forward to getting started, you know, training for my uh, future career. Last but not least, but do you have any advice for someone else that's interested in either pursuing becoming a medical assistant on whatever, whatever career path they're taking, and then also people that are specifically wanting to go into being a PA as an end goal, since you can speak on that. Um, any advice that you have for someone interested in following the same path as you? Yeah, I think um, just because the PA profession is a little new, they don't really do a great job of highlighting different career opportunities or making it super accessible. So um, with my role, I had to do a lot of research, a lot of reaching out to companies, a lot of reaching out to um, different providers and asking, you know, do you guys have space on your team? You know, I'm not necessarily trained in to be a certified, you know, medical assistant, but I'm super eager and I want to go to PA school and I want to be around providers. And a lot of jobs will um, train you on the job specific to, you know, that location or that office. And so I was fortunate enough to pick up one of those. So I think just reaching out, um, using Davidson alumni is also huge. I didn't find my current role through Davidson alumni, but there were some previous um, alumni that were medical assistants and had expressed willingness to reach out to their managers or um, you know, their hiring directors, uh, especially in a position like a medical assistant, since so many um, medical assistants do wanna go on to go to school, there's usually you know, pretty high turnover so usually, you know, if you just put yourself out there and you express an interest, typically um, there are a lot of positions that you'll find are open to you that maybe may not be broadcasted on like a job posting or something like that. So as with any job, you know, putting yourself out there is just huge. Um, if I had to give any advice for, you know, um, picking, you know, which job or going to PA school, I think 
definitely expose yourself to different environments, different types of patient care, different specialties, if you can. Um, I think that's always huge and it looks great on applications that, you know, you were willing to put yourself into different environments and try different things, whether that's doing a specialty that maybe you hadn't anticipated going into or, you know, doing inpatient and outpatient care, having something that you can speak on when you start to apply, I think is also just huge. So really having diverse experiences as well would be my biggest advice. I think that that's something that's really important for students that are wanting to go into the medical field, that networking is still important. Thank you so much, Lauren. I hope you have a great rest of your day and thanks for coming on Careers Explained. Of course. Thank you for having me.